channel. My name is Nisi J and I have another story time for you guys today. Another crazy one. Story time is going to be about when I got into a fight at graduation and also my first time going to jail. If you like crazy stories, feel free to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And yeah, join the family. Yeah, so let's get into this. And I was doing my makeup also and getting ready. Okay, so this story actually happened about um, 2016. Yep, five years ago. In my 12th grade year, I graduated 2016, first graduating class, yes. 2016, 2015, around that time were like some of the best years of my life. Greatest memories of my life. Let me know if I should go in order with my story times or like should I just do them at random because I have like a lot of crazy stories. But yeah. Ooh. <laughs> That was like the era of Instagram kick. I was a little fine, slim young teen at the time. So this dude slides into my DM. We started talking. Let's call him, uh, I'm trying to see what I wanna. Let's call him Steve. So me and Steve started talking, you know, we start getting to know each other and he ends up taking me on a date. So while we're talking, I'm asking him, do he talk to anyone? Does he have a girlfriend or anything? He seemed very interested. <laughs> he seemed very interested in me. We went to my favorite restaurant and then after the restaurant, we went to the movies. Now he ate, we're on our date and he kind of posted me to kind of like show me off or whatever. <laughs> And like, I don't know why the fuck he would do that knowing that he had someone else, but I guess he did. He posted me at this motherfucking dinner table. This damn girl immediately starts arguing with him and she's talking mad shit about me. So we shared a couple of words that night. So Monday comes around and the second tardy bell had rung and I saw her in the hallway and I kind of ran down on her. Now, sometimes during that day, he gave me his chain. So I put his chain on Monday morning and I ran down on her with his chain. I was really acting like a bitch who eat hot Cheetos for breakfast, baby. Kind of like that. So she was looking at me and she didn't want to fight. So we both went to class. Day goes by, you know, nothing else happens. It's time to get on the bus, go home. Motherfuckers on the bus that's cool with her, they kind of giving me a little attitude now. They was friendly at one point. Fuck y'all too, lame ass nigga. You know, whatever. So now I'm home now. Before Steve, I actually had an ex who put me in some bullshit with bitches too. Like, I don't know what the fuck was going on at the time with niggas. I had to argue with like three bitches that was dealing with my ex on Twitter. So like her thinking that I'm talking about her, she follows me on Twitter. Oh, Lord. I already know what time it is. So I go on her page. Cause I was with the shit at that time. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not even gonna lie. Like, I don't know. <laughs> like, oh my God. Like, but I get on her page knowing, you know, she was talking shit on me and of course she was. So now I'm Twitter beefing with her now. So now I'm Twitter beefing with like about like five, six bitches at this motherfucking time. So, and I guess that's kind of why I went off on her so bad Monday when I wore his chain or whatever and I wanted to fight. Because like, I'm literally, I'm literally dealing with this same shit with my ex. Like, I'm so tired of these bitches coming for me by these pissy tail ass niggas. After 2016, I remember at that time being very fed up with just like niggas and just them just not being able to control. And it's just pissing me off how I'm getting caught up in the crossfire. I chose my piece, goddamn. I was over it. I just didn't feel like it was worth all that. Nah. She was like a grade under me. It was my senior too. I didn't give a fuck about this nigga like she did. He was giving very much rebound for my ex. So I broke up with him right there on the spot and I tried to give him back to her. That seemed to kind of like piss her off more. Wait. Round of applause, bitch. You made me mad, bitch. I just hope you're ready. I hope you're ready to die by that dick. I hope you're ready to die by that dick because I'm ready to go to war for it. I'm virtually waving the white fucking flag trying to give this girl back her man.
basically over the whole course of the 12th grade i'm knee deep in a cold war i'm knee deep in world war i'm knee deep in world i'm knee deep in world war well, i'm knee deep in world war ii right now she watched every snap like she did not miss a snap she did not miss anything that i have ever posted like she like at this point i i have a stalker like i really have a stalker because let's not forget i don't even want to talk to this guy boy she cat called me every time she motherfucking seen my ass i was really giving obsessed Honestly, I think if we had the same class, we definitely would have fought every motherfucking day, like on some Tom and Jerry shit. Because every time we seen each other, it was like really like on some real beef ass shit. It became so one-sided after a while, I damn near want to label it as bullying. Like it's one-sided. Like this girl, this girl hates every fire in my being. And I don't even care at this point. I wouldn't really call it bullying, but she would have to initiate it with me. Like I was able to walk past her in the hallway and just like not acknowledge her. But like she'll see me and she'll have to say something to me and I'll have to respond. And that's how it would be. Like every fucking time I seen her. And I'm not gonna say every day because maybe senior year I had to see Ritis. I was barely even there. <laughs> but I like Fenty, but am I supposed to be excited that like 30 shades can be my shade? I have to go to Sephora and shop for that in person because it's a little darker. But I put it on my neck and kind of like go about my business. I didn't have that hate for her that she had for me. Like she was on my neck. She was on my neck that whole motherfucking year. I definitely had my responses. Like she joked on me for not having a car and riding the bus. But like I prayed and like maybe two weeks later, a week and a half, I got a car. I uh, pushed the start. Like one time she's arguing with me on Snap and I guess she chose arguing with me over paying, paying attention to the road. She had just left from school and we had just gotten to an argument like in the parking lot, I think. And instead of her watching the fucking road and driving, she arguing with me. And she got into an accident and she told about her car and had to get a new one. And I kind of laughed. So, like, I'm not innocent in it, but, like... But, like, fuck. Like, mad bitches would link up and they would get together and group stalk me. After a while, it really got to, like, oh, you still hate me? Like... Damn. Oh, baby, no, nah, that ain't gonna work. I would barely hear from Steve, but like, he would like definitely come out the cut sometimes to see what the fuck happened the last time that we talked and if we can get back together again. And I mean, like, I would talk to him, but we really wasn't like, I really wasn't kind of on that. I'm over here doing other story timeable shit. Like, so all of this has been formulating over the entire school year. So now we're getting closer to graduation. Literally a couple of days before graduation, I go to turn in my books. Kay is in the hallway and she's talking to the gems and I kind of, I kind of like, I kind of, Okay, I probably deserve this shit. It kind of was my fault. Like, certain kids be like really cool with the janitor at school. You know how like sometimes the kids have a relationship with like the cool ass janitors. So like she was talking to this janitor probably about me. And my friend at the time, my best friend at the time had hyped me all good. She was like, go over there and speak to the, just speak to the janitor. So I go over there and speak to the fucking janitor while she's standing there. That pissed her the fuck off. Honestly, I can genuinely say, I guess it's been build, building up over the year, formulating. I've never seen her so goddamn angry than what she was that motherfucking day. She said, bitch, you, you take one more motherfucking person out of my life, bitch. <laughs> Baby, to that argument, and I like, she, she following us to the parking lot, cause, cause we, cause I, difference that time i noticed the difference that time like it kind of was going like a it was kind of going like a degrassi tv show type thing but like right then and there that bitch had had it <laughs> with my fine ass 
Ross off camera. She calls him on the phone and she actually puts him on speakerphone. Like, like she just like all oh, bad bitch shit. She like, he's like, who the fuck? What the fuck this bitch? Done? and then we go the fuck home. So my friend is in her own little bullshit situation right now too. She took somebody boyfriend too, but she was friends with the girl. Now, now I ain't trying to switch sides or nothing, but just to let you know, ma'am, I mean, cause me and the girl was cool for a minute, but I was friends with the girl. It's like, that's like they story to tell. But like her and the girl was into it. Um, her and the girl was into it. But I didn't know that my friend knew the girl. So if my friend knew the girl, they was beefing because my friend took the girl. Um, boyfriend, and that was my best friend at the time. I said I should have cut her ass off then because that's some trifling shit. I was never on her side, but I was just supportive as a friend. But even then, I was like, hmm. But I just minded my motherfucking business. So. But they into it. So like I'm I'm dragged into it because I'm the best motherfucking friend. I be tween lyrics, tween them, even then tween lyrics, tween the wrong shit at the wrong time. Motherfuckers think I'm talking about them. So the girl who my best friend was beefing with started beefing with me, Twitter beefing with me on Twitter. You know how mad bitches link up. Me and Hey started arguing because she hopped in it. So we arguing on Twitter. A fucking in and it gets really I'm looking in the mirror it's really motherfucking heated this time I think I said on site because hell I'm tired of all this goddamn arguing on motherfucking Twitter and get it up here on the day of my graduation now the day started off rocky um I was late as fuck my hair wasn't done I had a lot of other story time shit going on that I'm gonna tell y'all about later but like it wasn't the motherfucking day and it didn't feel like the most happiest day of my life from the beginning any motherfucking ways. I kind of had a feeling to bring a knife underneath my gown. And then I was like, I don't know why I talked myself out of it. But I was just like, damn, because I'm not trying to carve nobody up like a pumpkin on graduation day. I would think that motherfuckers had enough sense to not do what I'm about to tell you that motherfuckers did. A bitch little tassel that you turn, I don't even got that. Like, I knew the day was gonna be some bullshit. The people that I was friends with at the time, we got into it about some shit. So it's after graduation, I'm alone. I go to meet my family and we start taking pictures. I don't know where the fuck my intuition went. So after we took pictures, I just said, I'm gonna turn in my cap and I'll see y'all um, graduation dinner that my auntie made for me. In the pictures, you see her friends in the fucking background, like. So I go turn in my cap and I run into this boy who I was in class with. He's been flirting with me the whole year, graduated with me. So we start walking and talking and how the, we graduated at like a college Akadon? Uh, 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 I can't think of the word, but we graduated there and it had like a balcony. So like we, we, we walking, talking, we standing by the balcony. I'm listening to him. See, he done sent me some penis pictures throughout the year. He got a real big thing. So we talking, you know, we making plans for the evening. I got my keys and my president to see if I can get my car alarm to go off because I low key don't know where the fuck my car at. I guess I guess she was standing below me and she seen me and she came up the stairs to the left of the balcony, came up the stairs and confronted me. I could have been on some, you know what, this is my graduation. We not finna, fuck no. I think I hit her first. So we're fighting. We're, we're fighting up there and the police kind of breaks us up. So, you know, I don't know if other college campuses are like this or not, but they took our ass to jail. Well, they took my ass to jail. She's underage or she was, she was underage at the time. So I don't know what the fuck happened to her, but they took my motherfucking monkey ass to motherfucking jail. I went to fucking jail. On graduation night, he maced me so my face is burning. I had to squat and I had to cough. Like I'm laying an egg in there. 
and they wouldn't let me post bun and leave that night they wanted i had to stay overnight i think because it was a domestic violence case people in jail were nice they were kind of just trying to give me like a damn like baby don't be fighting over these niggas i love blush now nah. But they kind of tell I ain't over no nigga and these niggas ain't, you know, worth fighting over and stuff, which I fucking know. You don't have to tell me that, but I'm just like, okay, whatever. Sorry about that. My camera died and I went on ahead and finished my face off camera. I used this palette right here and these two colors on the lip and a brown pencil, brown eyeliner, eyebrow pencil. Yeah, I know I gotta get my neck. Okay, back to the story. Yeah, so it's the next day. I'm out of jail now. I actually go to my family's house and they were kind of trying to see what the fuck happened and who won. <laughs> and even though sis was posting it on the snap like it was her football highlights and she just got picked for the NFL draft, I would say it definitely probably was a tie because I did good because that girl was twice my motherfucking size and I was in motherfucking heels. And I was focused on dick. What did he say? Oh, so Steve actually heard about it and he felt bad about it as he motherfucking should have. And he ended up taking me to go um get a tattoo and he paid for me to get a tattoo. After I got that tattoo, I did not talk to him again. <laughs> oh. You had to unscrew it. He didn't like that and he got mad and he went and he posted on her snap. <laughs> well, I didn't care. Like I, well, I kind of was going through a spiritual journey at that moment also where I was getting closer to God. I was getting a lot of revenge on people. And what God would do is he would punish me for trying to punish others instead of letting him do his job and punish the people. Going back and forth in my head about getting revenge. We trailed her. We tried to follow her home. What did he say? I guess she probably knew she was being followed and lost us along the way. And we lost her. And the other, like, we just could never get her. So I kind of saw that as a sign from God to just not. <laughs> That's kind of when I unfollowed her off snap because I'm like, okay, fine. So now, 10 years later, I'm happy I didn't carve anybody up like a holiday ham. I'm glad I let it go. Thank you so much for tuning into my channel. Again, my name is Nisi J, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your evening.